Okay guys, welcome you to your tutorial on simple interest. Now, what is simple interest? Well, when paying back amount borrowed from a bank or another financial institution, the borrower pays interest to the lender, in this case the bank. It's like, if you want to think about it, rent getting paid back on the money that you've borrowed. So you borrowed $500 for two years. It's like, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Here's the $500 back and here's a little bit, little bit of money for your time and effort. A financial institution can either be a lender, so a bank can either lend you money, or you can invest your savings with them. Okay. In either case, if you put money into a bank, they'll pay you interest also. They'll pay you money for letting you mine their money. If you borrow money from them, they'll charge you money for giving you the money. With simple interest, the percentage is calculated on the amount originally borrowed or invested and paid at agreed times. So say once a year, twice a year, three times a year, quarterly, four times a year. So how we work out simple interest, we have a straightforward formula, it's I equals PRN. In the case of that formula, I is the amount of simple interest you either have to pay back or that you get. P, this little guy in here, he is the principal amount, either the money you invest or the money you borrow. We multiply him by the interest rate per time period. This is either usually expressed as a fraction or as a decimal and you may have heard of this before when you've heard about interest. N, the final thing is multiplied, is the number of time periods, okay? So this isn't making too much sense at the moment. Let's have a look at a little example. So calculate the simple interest earned if the principal is 1,000, the rate is 5% per annum, and the time is three years. Whoa, stop the clock. Where did I get that phrase per annum? It's this little guy here, PA. When we're looking at interest, a lot of the time, particularly with simple interest, we see this PA and it means per annum. You might want to jot that down, but you might also want to jot down that per annum actually means per year. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so here in this case, I need to work, calculate the simple interest. So I write down my formula, I equals P R. N. Now I have no operators between this P, R and N which means that that formula is actually saying the simple interest equals P multiplied by R multiplied by N. And it kind of makes sense. $1,000 multiplied by 5% multiplied by 3 years. So how I work this out, my P is 1,000. So interest equals P is 1,000. My rate is 5%. This is why for the last few lessons I've been getting you to look at converting percentages to fractions to decimals. In this case, I'm going to handle 5% as a decimal. And if I write it as a decimal, my answer is 0 0.05. That's 5% as a decimal. Okay. And my number of time periods is three years. Okay. So this is my P. This is my rate. Okay. And then finally, my number of time periods is 3. So I equals PRN. And if I work that out, my answer will become 150. 150 what? And what does that mean? That means that the interest I have to either pay or that I've earned. Oh, sorry, it's, the question says earned. So the amount of interest earned. So I can assume it's an investment. That means if I put $1,000 into a bank and the bank tells me we'll pay you a simple interest rate of 5% per annum and if I leave it in there for three years, I will earn $150 on top of that 1000 So sitting in that bank account will be at the end, if I pull it out, I will have $1,150. I would have earned $150 in interest. Let's have a look at another example. Alan and Rachel plan to invest some money for their child. A lot of parents do this. A lot of parents set up bank accounts for their children so later on in life they can do something about it. They invest $4,000 for 30 months in a bank that pays 4.5% per annum. Calculate the simple interest and the amount available at the end of the 30 months. Okay, so I equals P R N. My interest equals my principal, original amount invested, $4,000, 
multiplied by 4.5% per annum, writing that as a decimal is 0, 4, 5, okay? Multiplied by my number of time periods. Oh, stop the clock. My rate is per annum, per year, but I've been given my time period as month. Now, I need to work out 30 months, how many years 30 months is. I can do this a few ways. I can count it out, okay? I can count it out and go, okay, one year is, okay, one year is 12 months, two years will be 24 months, it's still more than that. Oh, okay, I can keep on going. Another six months, ah, oh, that's 30 months. It's one way to do it. If you want to do it the official way, it's simply 30 divided by 12, which gives you an answer of 2.5. Okay, it's pretty straightforward, guys. So then I've converted my 30 months into years, becomes 2.5 years. I must convert my time period into years because my interest is given per year. I can't simply multiply it by 30 because that I will be saying 4,000 at 4.5% 4 per year multiplied by 30 years. It's not 30 years, it's 30 months. And if I actually work that out, my answer becomes 450, okay? 450, that's my interest. But my question says, calculate this simple interest and the amount available at the end of the 30 months. So then I must make sure my last step is, oh, sorry, that's not an equal sign. My last step is grabbing the original amount invested, adding the 450 to it and getting a total of, oh, I might actually rewrite this, getting a total of, so 450 was my answer. Dun, 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 dun. 4,000 original amount investment plus 450 would mean that at the end of things I'd had $4,450 available, okay? So my total amount is my amount invested plus my interest. First I work out the interest, then I'm and I've answered that part of the question, then I make sure I answer the second part of the question, how much will I have available for Kaylin at the end of those 30 months? Let's look at the next example. So Remy invests 2500 at 8% per annum, simple interest, for a period of time to produce $50 in interest. For how long did she invest the money? What? How would I work that out? Okay, how on the earth would I work that out? It's actually kind of straightforward. Okay, so I know my, my formula I equals P R N. Let's fill in the values I know. So I know the amount of interest. They've told me my amount of interest is $50. So I'll put my $50 in there. Okay. I know it's $2,500. Okay. I know it's $2,500. That's my principal amount. That's the amount I started with. And I know that it's 8% per annum. So I know that it's 0, 0.08. That's how I write 8% as a decimal. Okay, what I don't know is the number of years I invested it in. Okay, so what I can do is I can say 50 equals, what's 2,500 multiplied by 0 0.08. If I do it, I come out with an answer of 200 multiplied by N. Okay, so another way of writing that is 50 is equal to 200 N. Now we're going to have to stretch our minds all the way back. I'm just going to delete this just for the moment, just for the moment, please. I'll leave it with 50 equals 200 N. We're going to have to stretch our minds back to equations. Now, my problem over here is that I've got a pro numeral on one side. It's an equation, 50 equals 200 N. I could also write it as 200 N equals 50. That might help a few of you. I might actually even write the N in green. 200 N equals 50. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to find what my unknown is. Okay. In order to find what my unknown is, I need to pull things away from it. Okay. How do I pull things away from it? By doing the opposite. 
Okay, so if 200n equals 50, I need to find what 1n equals. In order to find what 1n equals, I simply move the 200 over to the other side of my equation. And if I'm putting it on the opposite side, I perform the opposite operation. n equals 50 divided by 200. Okay, n equals 50 divided by 200. So, my answer for n 50 divided by 200, n equals 0 0.25 years. Mm, 0 0.25 years. That's not a whole year. I need to work out what 0 0.25 years in months because I can't say 0 0.25 years. I suppose I could, and I mean if you gave that answer, you'd get some marks, but let's maybe, let's maybe make it look a little bit better. So then if I go 0 0.25 multiplied by 12, I'd get an answer of 3. What does that mean? That means Remy invested 2,508% per annum for three, 3 months and she got $50. It's moving the equation the opposite way. Again, an explanation of what I did here, okay? If you want to stop now, you're welcome. I'm just going to go back to this point because I think this is the point where a lot of people got lost. 50 equals 200N. Okay, 50 equals 200n. I am trying to find out what n is. It's an equation. I'm trying to find out my unknown, okay? For most of you who are getting lost, it's the idea that the n is on the right and not the left. So I can write it 200n equals 50. Again, it's simply equation. I'm trying to remove things from my pronumeral. I'm trying to get my pronumeral by itself. So if 200n equals 50, I need to find what 1n equals. n equals 50 divided by 200. Then it equals 0 0.25. Okay. The next step was saying 0 0.25 years is not a great way to write years. It's not a whole year. Okay. It's a fraction of a year or a decimal of a year. It doesn't matter which way I say it. It's a fraction of a year. Because again, 0 0.25 as a decimal is just another way of representing a fraction. And if I multiply that by 12, I would get an answer of 3 months. That's what I've done there, guys. If you want some clarification on that, I'm more than happy to help you. If not, that's simple interest. It's pretty straightforward.